guess what? Your tongue just got you in trouble right there with those words. Be careful not to be so quick to judge. Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love. James chapter 3. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body, which means control, self-control. Verse three, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. So we put the bits in their mouth. We pull to the left, they go left. We pull to the right, they go right. We pull back, they stop. That's what that's talking about. Verse four, behold also the ships, which though they be so great or so large, and they are driven of fierce winds, the wind, the water, all of that, yet are they turned about or steered like a car with a very small helm. Whithersoever the governor listeth, wherever the captain wants it to go, it goes. Even so, the tongue is a little member. That's the small one of the small members of our body. And boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and the birds and of serpents and the things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed by mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison, wherewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is wise? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conscience his works and with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. I had to read that whole chapter. It's only 18 verses, but it speaks so, it speaks volumes about what we allow to come out of our mouth. One of the things that convicted me years ago, uh, when I, I came from a family we were a heathen family. I love using that word because it sounds so religious, you know, just to be funny. But we were unsaved. We were a heathen family. And we would laugh, we'd joke, we'd cuss, we'd fuss, we'd fight, we'd fume, we laughed, joked, and cussed. Whatever we did, cussing was always in the midst. So I grew up with a cussing vernacular. It was part of my language. And it took me two years to stop saying the F word, the SH word, the, uh, the, all, the, all the things that, that we all used to say back in the day. But I fought it tooth and nail. And every time something would slip out of my mouth, I'd immediately ask God to forgive me. I wouldn't say I was sorry, 
I'm not always sorry for what I do or what I say, so I don't lie about that. But I ask God to forgive me, bottom line. All right, so, uh, <laughs> uh, but one of the things that we don't realize is the damage our tongues can do, even in the atmosphere. I remember years ago, I did a, a video on talking the devil's language. And there are words that you, if you think about it, words that if Jesus or God walked right up to you, stood face to face, I'm just saying, just think about it. Go with me with the imagination. Walked up to you face to face. Not one four-letter word, five-letter word, no, I mean, no offensive words would come out of your mouth, would it? You would immediately have self-control. So a lot of times, what I notice is there are Christians that are very loose with their tongue. They make allowances because, after all, this only means that, and that only means this. And so they just, you know, just say stuff when they want to. But what you don't realize is there are some words that have a connotation to them. Now, we're going a whole, a whole lot of different directions with this tongue. There are some words that have connotations to them, and they set the atmosphere, just like praise and worship, hallelujah, glory to God, praise you, Father, we love you. Words of edification, they set an atmosphere. And the atmosphere is godly and uplifting and pure and clean and, and it's just beautiful. But when you start allowing some of the worldly forms of conversation and communication come out of your mouth, what ends up happening is you change the atmosphere from holy to worldly. You bring down the bar, so to speak. You, you contaminate the atmosphere even though you're not doing it viciously. The words themselves, sometimes words have a spirit to them. That's why there are certain words I won't allow to cross my lips. Words like the SH or the FU or the MF or the, uh, 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 well, you know, you guys know them, yeah. And even Jesus said, don't even call a person a fool. You know, raka. Yeah, don't go there. There's certain, certain things you don't allow your mouth to engage. Because what you end up doing, in, un, or let's say inadvertently, or unintentionally, you end up allowing a funnel your mouth to be a funnel for Satan or demons to express themselves. So it's a certain level of self-control. It's not going to send you to hell. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is sometimes we have to take the initiative to raise our own bar. We have to stop complaining. We have to stop whining. We have to stop saying, you know, one thing I had to stop myself from saying was, boy, that's just my look. Boy, yeah, yeah, if it be like my look, it'll end up like this. It'll end up, oh, that ain't no use. Ain't no use in me trying that. It's not going to work. I had to stop saying that stuff. I had to start remembering how much I was blessed and verbalizing that, vocalizing it. Lord, you have blessed me so much. There is no such thing as with my luck. There is no such thing as my lot in life. No, 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 no. That chapter and, and verse is closed. Right now, I am blessed, too blessed to be stressed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, thank you for whatever you're going to do. This may be a challenge, but thank you because I know you have not forgotten me. I know you will not leave nor forsake me. That's a promise. And I know you'll stick to your promises. And I, and I aim not to leave or forsake you. So sometimes we have to be careful because what the Bible says, 
out of the abundance of the heart, right in here, the mouth speaks. And we find ourselves not always admitted, admitting it, but by the time we get to spewing out our woes verbally, our heart is filled with anger towards God. That's something a lot of us don't admit. I'm quick to admit when I'm angry with God because we have a relationship. And just like I got angry and ticked off at my parents, I, I got angry and frustrated with God too because I didn't know what he was doing or why. And I would tell him and I would ask him to help me understand or help me settle my nerves while I'm waiting on him to bring the change because I know he's going to bring it. I just don't always know why he goes through certain channels to get it done. <laughs> so knowing that sometimes see life is always full of challenges people get on our nerves there are happenstances that 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 drive us crazy so i remember they said uh the uh, well no i don't want to go there because that's that's hearsay but the bottom line is there are times when you're almost like a self-fulfilled prophet you say something negative about your health, about your wealth, about your poverty, about your situation, about the stigma, about your frustration, about things that are, that seem to be constantly working against you, no matter how hard you try. And you end up not really knowingly at times, you know, sometimes you might know. But you end up getting bitter. That's where that root of bitterness start to spring up in you. As the Bible says, and thereby many, many be defiled. See, when you got anger hidden in your heart, you're short tempered, you snap quicker. You can say mean things, mean, mean, ugly. Because somebody turns you off. Somebody's attitude or behavior gets on your last nerve. Now, I believe the Lord had me read James chapter 3. I haven't dealt with this in years. But, so I'm going with it. But the bottom line is, sometimes we have to ask God to give us more self-control. Even in our thoughts and our words, because the Bible does say we will be judged for our thoughts, not only our words, not only our actions, but our thoughts, y'all, and hidden motives. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. Hidden motives. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? We don't always know why we do things that we do. We don't always know why we feel the way we do, why we don't try this, why we don't try that. Because we're angry, we're bitter, we're frustrated, and we don't want to be bothered. I don't even want to waste my time believing in God for that. Why bother? Yeah, you may not be verbalizing it, baby, but it's all behind everything you do and everything you don't do, everything you feel and everything you say. Don't realize it. Those are those little hidden, those little hidden things that come out in the open and they come out in the most inopportune times, the most inopportune moments. Let me share this with you, why I'm saying that. This is, this is where your heart has to be constantly in check with the Holy Spirit. Years ago, and I wasn't saved, so I was very open to whatever demonic influence wanted to, to influence at the time. And I was getting, I was trying to avoid getting in a fight with this girl I wasn't angry with, but I bumped her by mistake. Uh, the kids started, you know, trying to push us into a fight and they, they, they goaded her into meeting me outside in the schoolyard at 3.30 after school. So we get ready to fight. And this is some of the things that many of you don't think about. This is why if you can't control your words, baby, one day something's going to happen and you're not going to be able to control your whole body. 
I'm telling you, the hardest thing to control is the tongue. You got that tongue under, under control, guess what? You got your attitude, you got your behavior, you got your reactions. All of that comes under control as well. So aim at that tongue. Now listen, here I was. Hmm. I was I was trying to tell one of the teachers they're trying to start a fight out in the schoolyard. And one of the kids came and got me. And I was too chicken to say, no, I got to tell them this first. So I went on with them. I never did tell it. And we got to the schoolyard. And there was Margarita waiting for me with a circle of kids waiting to see the show. Yeah, we're going to have a fight. So they start pushing her and pushing me and pushing her and pushing me. Till finally she, she grabbed my hair. I'm, I was tenderheaded. So she wrapped, I think it was twice to get my hair, and I had to wrap three, three or four times to get hers. But we both, I was trying to make her let go. That's all I wanted her to do. I wasn't trying to fight. I wasn't angry. I just wanted her to let go because it was hurting. So me being athletic, I walked her. She and I were the same size, same height, same everything. I walked her over to the schoolyard wall, to the school wall, the building, the wall, the brick building. And I was stronger than her in my legs because I was athletic. I played handball every day. So I was very strong. And I walked her over while she had a grip on my hair. I had a grip on hers. And when I got her to that wall, I, with my grip all the way down to her scalp, I bashed her head up against the wall. Listen now, before you think I'm a monster, I, my mind was saying, I just want her to let go of my hair. Just let go of my hair. I, 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 I don't do pain. But then I stopped feeling pain. And the next thing I know, I was being flung up in the air. Now listen to what I'm saying. I'm making a point. Flung up in the air, 40, 30 or 40 feet away from the wall. Uh, all I knew was I was going like this, forward, back, forward with her head to make her let go of my hair. Next thing going back, I'm being raised up in the air and I am 40 feet away from the wall that I was just at a second ago. I was picked up by an adult school monitor. He was breaking up the fight, and that's why I went flying through the air. You know what that means? That means Mama Sita blacked out. I blacked out, y'all. And when I blacked out, I'm realizing, wait a minute, one second we're at the wall, the next minute I'm... I'm a, a, a school bus or a city bus length away from the wall. How did that happen? I'm standing there feeling no pain, nothing. Margarita is bent over with her face wet with tears. My mind is saying, why is she bent over holding her stomach? Why isn't she holding her head? We were at the wall. It was her head hitting the wall, not her stomach. I didn't do anything to her stomach. So I had no idea that minutes, minutes, minutes had gone by. And one of the kids said, I was saying, well, why is she bent over? And they said, because you were, she was on the ground and you were kicking her on her stomach. And you just kept kicking her and you wouldn't stop. That is when you have totally lost control, y'all. There are times that things come out of your mouth and you do more damage than what I did to Margarita. I'll never forget that. That was the day I realized I could not trust my temper because I realized I'm capable of doing stuff to people that I didn't even know I'd be doing. So if you hear people say they murdered somebody or they went off or they went into this blind rage, they don't remember what they did. Next thing, their hands are full of blood. Trust me, it's doable. That's possible to black out like that. That's why you cannot give in to your rage. That's why you got to ask God to heal the hurts, the angers, remove the frustrations, remove the anger, remove the rage, remove the bitterness, get rid of it. Because if you don't get rid of it, it will get rid of you one way or another.
That's why some people are incarcerated right now because they blacked out. So the first thing you want to do is control the tongue. That's the first thing. You start feeling that anger, that dander rising up in your and in, in getting hot up under the collar. Immediately say this prayer, Lord, take the anger out. You start finding yourself getting offended because somebody said something that hurt your feelings or offended you. Lord, take the hurt out and help me. Help me not be so sensitive. Because the only reason I'm so sensitive is because there are wounds, emotional scars that have never been healed. And when you're flinchy emotionally, this, they said that, whoo, why they say that to me? And this, and this happens, and, well, I did this. Why didn't they acknowledge what I did? And you're going through all these changes. You're scarred emotionally. Those are emotions you don't need to waste your time on. That's old stuff. That's stuff God could have gotten rid of decades ago. But are you asking him? Because one thing about it, if you ask not, mm -hmm, you have not because you ask not. All right. So we have to constantly lean on God, like I said the other week. We have to lean on God with everything. What we think, what we feel. When I say raise the bar, y'all, I mean, y'all need to raise the bar to the point where you always aim at 100%. You always aim. You may not get but 85, but trust me, the higher you aim, the higher you'll end up. That's a natural law right there. The higher you aim, the higher you'll end up. You can't aim low. You won't get far. You take an arrow, a bow and arrow, and you aim straight and shoot. That thing's going to hit the ground before it hits the target. But if you want to hit a target that's far away, you got to aim that bow up high, baby. That's what you got to do. So you've got to take control of that tongue. That tongue can make you or break you. That tongue can make other people or break other people. That tongue can be so mean you chew them up and spit them out. And then when they avoid you, you wonder, well, what's wrong with you? Well, what's wrong with them is that you just let the, the, the gates of hell loose out on them. They don't want to be bothered with you, but you can't see it because all you're doing is being real. You're being real at other people's expense. You cannot do that. According to God's love. See, a lot of us think after we speak. You got to you gotta think before you open that mouth and flap that bell clapper in, your, in, in, in there between them lips. That bell clapper can do some serious damage. And you wonder why people don't want to be bothered. You wonder why people want to avoid you. You're either fussing or you're mean, or you're angry, or your temper is foul, or your words are very abrasive, aggressive, or you're whining. It's negative, negative this, negative that, woe is me, this is wrong, that's wrong, why, 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 why me? But sometimes if you change your focus, and you lean on God and you change how you change your perspective. It's like you don't look at life from the bottom step. You climb up at the top of the ladder or you climb up to the fifth floor and then you look down and get a whole panorama view. You get a whole different picture of what's really going on. But the only way to get that view is to go to God and ask him to open your eyes to what it is he wants you to see. Because sometimes you think the world is picking on you. The world is victimizing you. And God himself is trying to teach you something. God himself is trying to show you something. But are you willing to see it for what it is? It may be the truth about yourself, a truth you're not willing to face. 
a truth you're not willing to acknowledge. All right. One of the things the Lord admonishes us about is not being judgmental as well. And judgmental, uh, having a judgmental spirit or judgmental attitude or, or being judgmental in our words, whatever. That comes from pride. Arrogance and pride does not come from humility. It comes from arrogance and pride. So, so that's one of the things the Lord wanted me to deal with, how you look at other people. Well, I don't do what they do. I'm cool. I don't do that mess. I never did that mess. Just like the, the, the Levite praying and the sinner is praying in the sanctuary. And the Levite is, is saying, oh, Lord, I thank God. I don't do, I'm not like that sinner. I, I, I never did what that sinner did. I pay my tithes. I do this. I do that. I do everything. You see me, Lord. I do. I, I pay tithe and mint and ruin. I do everything according to your word. And I observe the Sabbath. And I go to church every week. And I do all the religious things you require of me. Oh, I thank God I'm not like that sinner. The Bible refers to that uh, Levite as praying to himself. Ain't that a trip? He didn't say he was praying to God. He said he's praying to himself. But check this out. The, the sinner, Jesus is telling the story. The sinner won't even lift up his head. He knows he's wretched. He knows he's a mess. He won't even lift up his head out of shame or whatever. And all he does is beat his chest. God, have mercy on me, a sinner, period. That's the end of the prayer. The, the Levite went through a whole dissertation about how wonderful he was and how he wasn't like. He didn't do that stuff that sinner did. Mm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, which one? went away justified it was the sinner because the sinner knew how bad that stuff stank mm -hmm. that's humbling yourself not looking at others as if you are so superior to them because you never did what they did you never went where they went mm -hmm. You never experienced what they experienced. Mm -hmm. You never sinned like they sinned. Right. Well, guess what? Your tongue just got you in trouble on that one. Mm -hmm. So understand that you have to be careful how you look at others. Because you find yourself looking down your nose at the very people that God's heart is very open to. And you're begging and pleading and crying and, and going through changes, waiting for God to work miracles for you. And God's saying, your heart's not right. That's the bottom line. You're trying to get all this out of me. And I can't even get an honest confession out of you. You think you're confessing because, you, you know, you got a traffic ticket or, or you got, you know, somebody witnessed you doing this or you did that and it made you feel bad. But what's in your heart is foul. And you won't even acknowledge that because you don't see anything wrong. What comes out of your mouth is destructive. You're, you're, you're very mean. You're very oppressive. And you don't realize you shrivel up other people's spirits by the time you get through spewing out your angry words at them. By the time you get through spewing out your frustrations and, and your, your meanness and your, little, your, your criticisms and all of that. By the time you get through, you feel like all you were doing was expressing truth. And God is saying, you know, anytime you got truth at the expense of someone else's self-esteem, at the expense of someone else's emotional ability or whatever, anytime your self-expression of honesty tears somebody else up, baby, shut your mouth. 
You do not have the right to do it. That is not out of love. That's out of that's out of judgment, contempt, disrespect, meanness. Nothing nice about that at all. But you think that it's holy and sanctified because you're telling the truth. Listen, you can preach the word of God. You can sit up there and counsel somebody. And if you say something mean just to be mean, because you know you're going to tell them they're going to hear this. Your attitude, your motive is wrong. You're trying to hurt them. You're trying to make them shrivel up in shame. That's not your job. You're not Holy Ghost Jr. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, not Josephine, the Holy Spirit. Not William Tell, the Holy Spirit. No. God, the Spirit. So stop being so quick to try to make people see themselves. That ain't your job. It's your job to tell the truth. And it's your job to confront certain things. But confront doesn't mean, yeah, I saw what you did. You think you're getting away with it. But let me tell you, baby, uh-uh, God's going to punish you. See, that's really a curse coming from your heart. Ain't nothing holy about that. Nothing holy. See, we don't realize when we're dealing with other people, God said, be patient, be kind, be gentle. The Bible says, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak. You know you're dealing with somebody that doesn't have it together. You don't browbeat them. Mm. Anyway, we have to use our mouth as an oracle for God. Like the Bible says, sweet water and salt water doesn't come out of the same fountain. The same way, see yourself as a water hose. Do you want a water hose filled with dirt spewing out on people? Or do you want a water hose that's clean and sterile, uh, pushing out fresh water to refresh in the people that receive that water? Which kind of water hose do you want to be? Because listen, when it's all said and done, I don't care if you're a prophet, if you're a teacher, if you're a preacher, if you're a pope, if you're a priest, if you're whatever, you ain't nothing but a, 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 a conduit for God to express himself through you, not for you to express you. Do you on your time. Try not to do you at all. Because when you do you, you contaminate the whole scene. And you take a holy atmosphere and totally taint it. Spoil it. Ruin it. Foul it up. <laughs> All right. So pray to God as often as you can. Be as honest as you can and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He will teach you. He will help you with your self-control because the Holy Spirit gives you the ability to use self-control. That's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. He empowers you to control your mouth. He empowers you to control your attitude. He empowers you to control your reactions and actions. Amen. Amen. God bless you.